West Brom fans must be happy the day of came here from St James Park with the one no win. Um, happy but frustrated more than anything. Uh, obviously, I think the, the Southampton result means we're effectively down or can only stay up on goal difference now. Oh, right. uh, so, but it's just frustrating. Like, where's it been all season? And um, managers, well, a manager like Big Dave, he's putting he's putting people like Pulis and. That, Alan, that, Alan Pardew, Alan Pardew. Alan, the wonderful Alan Pardew, Alan Pardew the, the, the really. so loved round here, so loved round here as well, not just down your end. I mean, no, just, I don't know why they kept him as long as they did. Uh, well, I don't know why they appointed him in the first place. That's the problem. Um, these these managers now, like Pardew, are, are going to stop being employed soon because literally it's this merry-go-round of of managers that keep on failing and failing and failing and failing at every club. He's still on your contract. He's still on your eight-year deal. If you think of it like that, so. So, yeah, we listen, I'm with my friends Andy, who hated Pardew with a passion. I never wanted him anywhere near my football club, and I didn't even want to give him a chance. And I was vindicated to be right because the rubbish that he supplied in the middle of the, of the season has effectively got us relegated. Does it highlight the fact that football fans should be careful what they wish for? Because were you amongst the ones who wanted Pulis out? Because fair enough, as well, always safe, but the quality of football was poor. But then Alan Podge comes to the door, and you think, bloody hell, I'd, I'd take Pulis back. It wasn't the football. Um, I, I could deal with it. It was, don't get me wrong, when you won, you kind of shrug your shoulders and you go, okay, fair enough, it's acceptable. Uh, when you lost, it was horrific. But the the two wins in 21 games under Pulis is enough to get any manager sacked. And, yeah, yeah, and yeah. He, he had to go. I mean, I'll. I, I, I lost I lost my rag with him at home to Watford when we're two and up after half an hour and he goes five in the middle shuts it off completely and we conceded a 95th minute equaliser and that was the turning point of the whole season I think because the fans turned on him then properly and then we just started going and obviously he went and then Pardew came and it's towards the towards the back end of last season it was one winning 16 and then they gave him a three year contract in the summer and you're like well, that's insane and then they, they sacked him about well, eight games down the line and they didn't have a plan who to bring in it, it's silly you, you sack him at the end of the season you shake hands and say thank you very much you did a great job off you go Tony get Thanks someone else in with their own and, players and, and then you and then you start again you start you build it fresh in the summer and you could have had the choice of managers because you were comfortable you were your eighth season in the Premier League you were a, an attractive proposition for a decent manager and then instead you employed someone like Pardew and the club looked doomed and that's the kind of quality that you're going to get at that stage so obviously for you it's looking like you're going down since the Southampton result yep. where do West Bromwich Albion go from here? Uh, hopefully uh, nice fresh start in the summer uh, get some new blood in I mean I don't want him to be the manager because I don't want us to ever have to sack him because he's a legend <laughs> um, but we're going along the way with every passing game you think how oh, can you not give him the job with the result with the job that he's done um, if not him hopefully someone like Dean Smith at Brentford just something just give us a little bit give us something to look forward to again and well they've given us a bit of pride going off into the end of the season so they, they haven't gone down not fighting so yeah just New, new fresh faces have a clear out and hopefully come back next season yeah, a lot of hopefully. players that need to be moved a lot of dead wood um, at the club people like Hal Robson Carney um, who never should have been signed or let alone given a two year contract extension this year never and, seen anyone in a World Cup or like or <laughs> Euro, Euros, it was the Euros but never seen anyone on a couple of weeks basis well the Reading fans couldn't believe he got to move to the Premier League let alone anybody else and they watch him every week yeah. he's rubbish and he's, he's never been any good and yes we said oh we'll have him typical Tony Pulis signing no risk nothing like that so yeah time to clear out of Deadwood there's a lot of Deadwood that can be gone and then start again what's the uh, what's your love view on Newcastle then as an outsider looking in oh. what do you make of the club and the Rashley and the Rafa and- um, well Always like Newcastle. Uh, yeah, always, love, always, always love, love Newcastle. Love Newcastle. Second, second Newcastle team, Newcastle third team, if you want to call it that. Um, yeah, okay. I think obviously Ashley's <coughs> Ashley's a crook, and he's just what, what he is. He's and if, he, if he's not careful, the best thing that you've had in years will walk away in the summer, um, and that's the way it is. He's got to back him, or he's got to sell the club and let somebody else get, give it, have a crack at it, and give you guys hopefully what you deserve to be a trophy. Mm. Yeah, fantastic fan base, fantastic city. Love coming up here. Um, you know, always come up here when the Albion are in town if we can. It, it's a great place to be, and it's a shame that you know the trophies are going to London and Manchester, but well, actually they should be somewhere it deserves to be. And I think they deserve, this city deserves a trophy. It really, really does. The fans deserve a trophy. You know, more fanatical fans in the country I don't think I've seen. So it would be a massive shame. But you know, fingers crossed, one day, one day. The big talking point is uh, the England World Cup team. The who should be on the seat? Who should be on the plane to Russia? Jake Livermore is fancied by Gareth Southgate, a lot of Newcastle fans, and even on match day two, we're calling for John Joe Shelby to be there. 
instead of him as he brings like a bit more creativity to it. What would Albion fans say about that? Would you rather, who would you rather have in your West Brom team, for example, than rather than John Joe Shelby on the team sheet for Albion or yeah, yeah, yeah. Livermore? Yeah, Livermore's been much improved in the last five games, really. Uh, he's given a good go. He put a good ball in for Phillips today for the goal. Um, but he's... 18 he's months a, of dross before he, that, really. Yeah, Let's be honest, he's, he's had 18 good. months of, he's, he's of poor good. performance. Why do you think he's getting picked in for anything? Just because Southgate knew him from the other 21s? Or? Probably, yeah. I mean, I think he had a little decent run under Pulis when he first came in for the like, first 10 games. He was okay. Nothing special. Uh, but I think he was in and around it anyway. And um, granted, I don't think Southgate should be the manager anyway. So. No, well, <laughs> so I, the point, I, I, I think it's a pointless. I, I think we'll struggle to get out the group. We'll just about get out the group stage. You know, we'll, we'll get a horrible draw against Panama or something like that. Uh, we'll lose to Belgium and we'll squeeze through with four points and then, and then we'll get put out. Right, yeah. And we'll get put out in, in the group of whatever it is. Tough. Yeah, yeah. Well, as soon as we face anybody French decent. The Germans, French, the Germans, that. Spanish, the Italians. It doesn't make a difference. The Italians are not there, are they? No. But anybody any, with any decent squad will make us look a little bit silly. Okay, thanks very much, lads. Hey, you're welcome. All the best. Thanks, man. Thanks, Pete.